how to use the Photoshop gradient presets in CC220. It's completely different from 219, 218, 217, etc. Even though the gradients basically are much the same, just the functionality has changed. So you go to the gradient tool and you can see along the top, there's no real difference there. The only difference is if you go to the gradient drop down there. And you can see there's some structure now to the gradients. So instead of them all in one mass, you've now got them in groups. And you can move the groups around, you can delete groups, you can rename groups, you can move them within groups, and so on and so on. And that structure is throughout the whole of the application. And it's also similar to patterns and custom shapes. So if you create a new layer, a new fill layer, you can see drop down there and exactly the same structure. You've got basics, blues, pinks, etc. And if I go and create a new layer and then go to layer style, create a layer style for that layer, the gradient overlay will have exactly the same. And that's carried throughout all of the rest of the functionality that uses gradients. There's also an additional new panel, and that's a gradients panel. And you can find that via the window menu. There's also a patterns as well as shapes. So the window menu, key panel also is layers as well, but there's a gradient. So you select that, and that will bring up the grades panel. And they're exactly the same structure as all the others. You've got all your basics, you've got your blues, purples, and you can expand them out as well as collapse them. And you can see multiple gradient presets within each of those groups, gradient groups. You've got also a right side menu with a lot of functionality for creating gradients, importing, pending, and so on and so on. So if I select all of those gradients, you can just delete them. Don't want any of those, you can just delete the lot. Now, if you wanna bring them back, to put it back to the default, so if you've made some mistakes or you're not happy with stuff, what you can do, you can always go right side menu and you can go to append default gradients. And that will bring them all back straight away. And if you do repeat it, it will just add them again, again and again. So you'll end up with thousands of gradients. What you can also do, right side menu, legacy gradients. And that will bring back all your 2019, 2018, etc. gradients. Now it won't bring back your own created gradients or imported gradients. So you've got all your gradients there. What you can do, because I've got a gradient, because I've got a layer already there, selecting that gradient in that panel immediately turn that layer into a gradient fill layer. If it had been the background layer, it wouldn't have changed. It would simply have just changed the gradient preset, but that would have been it. But it because I had a layer already there, clicking on the gradient meant the gradient, the layer was changed to that gradient. And if I go through now, clicking on those gradient presets in that group or any of the groups, the gradient will be changed in that gradient layer. It won't add a new gradient layer. It's still only one single layer. And you can run through the whole lot. So you can quickly try out all of the gradients very quickly. And you'll see when you create them that they're always created as a radial. The reason for that is there's an option in the right side menu to set the type default style. At the moment, it's set to radial. You can change that. Now, if I drag from there, the presets, as I drag over, it will change it again. It's exactly the same as clicking click or drag. And you can drag and drag. Now, if you hold down the Alt or Option key at the same time as dragging, then a new gradient fill layer is generated. If you don't hold that down, all it does, it just changes the gradient fill to the existing layer. And that's in the layers panel. So you can see in all the layers, they're all gradient layers. And if you want to change them at any point, you can double click on them and it will bring up the panel for the gradient fill and you can edit it as before. Now, if you want to change them to always be linear or angle or diamond, maybe say linear. So you select the 
And that's the default. That's going to be the default. Now, whenever you do any action from that panel, like dragging something over into a layer, just dragging like that, the layer is not changed in terms of adding a new layer, but it's obviously the presets changed as also the style that's used now is linear. You can double click on it and you see it there, linear, before it was radial. And now that is the default. Anything you create now will be linear. If you change it, say go to angle, so you go to angle, it doesn't change the existing layer. So if I drag now into that layer, it'll be angle gradient as the default. And it will always use that right side menu to default. Now that doesn't modify the gradient style at the top. If you're using the gradient tool, you'll notice that is still set as radial. That doesn't change. Now I can flatten all the layers. So it's back to just the background layer. So if I go to that gradient tool, use the gradient, it will use along that top bar. So if I click now on the gradients, it doesn't change the gradient at all because it's the background layer and that's locked. But if I drag from there, I simply just select one of those and just drag, now that will create a new layer and it will be created using the default setting that we had, which was angle. So if I go and select another one, again, it will be created using the current one. If it's simply the background layer, just changing it in the preset will not add a layer. But the action of dragging will create a new one. You can see there's a structure to the grain. So you've got them in blues, legacy, etc. And you can expand and you can collapse. But then also you can select a group and you can drag it below an existing group. And then you'll see a sort of dividing line appear. And you can put it below. You can drag it above again. You see that blue line appear. So you can move them around. You can also select a group and simply drag on top of a group. And then that group will be added as a subgroup within group. So if I expand that group out now, you can see the basics ones there. And if I want to simply select that group again and drag back out again. And you can do exactly the same with the gradient presets as well. So you can select groups of them, individual items or multiple gradients and drag those around and move them around. You can move them within around a group or move them into a new group. So if you want them in different positions, you can also, like I say, just there, just dragging them into the blues. Let me expand that out now. So the basic section. So you can see all the blues there now in the basics. And simply select them again and then drag them back into the blues. And also, if you want, you can also you can drag them out of a group. You don't have to have them in a group. They can be dragged dragged in between the groups and that will just put them separate from groups. You can also, of course, just delete them if you wish as well. But within a group, you can also select different gradient presets and drag them to a different position if you want to do that. So you can reorder them in any way. You can also go and create a new gradient preset. So you've got a new gradient preset there. To actually create a new gradient preset, click the new. And it's slightly confusing because you think it's created one, but it hasn't. You have to click new. And that is created outside of that group. If there's no group selected, then it's created outside the group. If you were inside a group and then create a new gradient preset, it will be created within that group. But you can always drag them around if it is not added to the group you want it. If it's put outside, simply drag it around. So you've got new gradient preset and you can create all kinds of gradients very quickly that way. But also you can create gradient group presets as well. Using that right side menu and that will be added down the bottom. Group one. You can select some presets that already exist and drag those into that group. So you can see now if I expand that out, that group contains that 
gradient preset that I've dragged from another group. I can also rename the group. So within that group, I can rename it by just right clicking on that group or going to the right panel side menu. So I can now call it Andrew Group there. So I can also delete the group via that right side menu as well. Also, I can change the type display so it's like large thumbnail. Most time I keep it as small thumbnail or you can have it as text. I find it very hard to use the gradients using text options. So generally I keep it the small thumbnail. Just makes it easier, especially with the big one now, it just, just fills the screen too much. There's also an option there you can show a recents. So you can see all the gradients that you've used and you can simply select on those, click on those. And you see as soon as you change them, you look at the top left, you see the gradient preset there changes. And that's using like the gradient tool. When you use a gradient tool, you will just use those gradient presets. Just a quick and easy way of using your most favorite gradients. You can see there the gradient there. Again, if I now select, I can go over to that gradients panel and select a gradient and click on that and then apply the gradient. As it's only a single layer, background layer, it doesn't create a gradient layer. What you can also do, you can import gradients. So you might have loads, loads of gradients you had previous versions. You want to import them. What you can do, go to import gradients command. And that looks for, well, brings up a browser. You have to manually look, unfortunately. doesn't go and find all the gradient files for you. You have to go and look for GRD files. Now I've got a selection of them. These ones are Graphic Extras gradients. You can find that collection on the Graphic Extras website. So just go and select a GRD file and then click on it and open it. And it should be able to accept all kinds of gradient formats. I don't know if there's any limitations on if you've got very old gradient files, whether there's a problem. So it just simply imports those gradients and it imports it as a group. So you've got a new group and it keeps the name of the, obviously the GRD file that you imported. You can always rename that group if you wish. And you can also simply do as before. You can simply, if you've got a layer, you can drag onto that layer and you can then try out all the different gradients. And of course, it defaults using the current style. So if you set the current style to radial and then drag. Now, if I drag from now, because I've changed it to radial, it will be created as a radial. It's still only a single layer. If you hold down the Alter Option key, it will create a new layer, new gradient layer. And that's an imported gradient. But what you can also do, you can also export gradients. So I'm just going to quickly show you the export gradients. Now you can export, say, a single gradient. So any of those, just select a single one. Or you can select maybe a group. So you've got your gradients panel. And just right side, you've got export selected gradients. But it does need something to be selected. So what's selected at the moment is only one single grain. Now, I don't want just that. So I'm going to select a couple of groups. So reds, oranges, etc. And everything that's within that group will be exported. Not just the group name. The, everything is exported. So all those are selected. All of the gradients within that are selected now. What you can do, right side menu, go down to export selected gradients. Now, it doesn't give you any information. It doesn't say that 23 gradients have been exported or anything. Just exports them and it saves them as GRD format. That's the gradients format for Photoshop. And then, of course, once you've got that, you've got GRD file, you can then give it to your work colleagues, give it to your friends, you can put them on the web, whatever. You can create a whole range of different gradients. And you can always, of course, once you've got your GRD, GRD files, you can always then import them again later. Give it a name, test one, and save. 
So that's saved. They're very, very small files generally. If you've only got like 10 or 20 gradients, most times hardly any space is taken up at all with these GRD files. So you've got your GRD file now saved. What you can do, of course, say a lot later in a couple of weeks' time, you suddenly think, I want that file back in again. You can just import them. Deleted those. And I can delete all of them if I wanted to. I could delete the whole lot. But I can also go to that right side menu and go to Import Gradients. And again, look for the GRD file. And luckily, it hasn't moved folder, so I can find it. And it's right just down the bottom. As Test 1. Luckily, it gives the name. All the various details. Obviously, hopefully you would have exported it with a better name than test. And then open that. And again, you can see down the bottom, test one. It's all in a group. That group structure of the reds, oranges are still there. So you can still see your structure you had before. And all the gradients within those groups are stored as well. Display. Now, if you don't want test one, simply select all of those gradients, those groups and then simply drag above the test one. And now test one has no gradients at all, no groups or anything. So you can just delete it. Now you can do exactly the same with all of the gradient groups. If you don't want to use the groups, simply go to each and every group, drag all the gradients, drag them out of the group and put them in a separate, complete separate section and then, of course, what you can do, you can select all those gradients and you can go to the right side menu and use the export command. So you've got a gradient file with all of your gradients all stored away in a single basic group. That's a run through of the gradient presets in CC220. As mentioned, not for 219, 218, etc., just for 220. Hope you found this tutorial of interest. Please subscribe to the Graphic Extra channel, always adding new tutorials all the time about Photoshop, Affinity Photo, Illustrator and many others. Really hope you found this gradient presets tutorial of some use and please add some comments about it. Always appreciated. Also, a dislike or like. Thank you much.